Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Just going to get set up. I will have the Q&A open tonight. So if you see me looking to the side, I'm just uh, checking that out. Um, yeah, but we'll be getting started shortly. I'm excited for this talk. We have so many clinicians using the GLP-1 agonists and, uh, you know, side effects happen. So let's, uh, let's confront that head on and build out some amazing products which is Vitamin Labs Strong Suit. We can really tailor things, we can customize things and prescribe like never before. Okay, so hopefully, yeah, you're seeing my screen. We'll get started right on time. So I'll just give one more minute for people to join. If anybody wants to share where they're coming from, I always love knowing where we're, where we're joining from. So again, the Q&A will be open. So feel free to chime in. I'm not a pharmacist. So I'm not saying I'm a super duper expert in these drugs, but uh, definitely have a lot of patients using them and creating support protocols, something I do all the time. So let's brainstorm together and I'll show you how I formulate, give you some mental frameworks and we'll uh, confront some of the most common side effects head on. Okay, looks like we can begin. So welcome. Welcome to Personalizing with Confidence. So we're going to be using your clinical expertise to create custom genius products for your patients, and they are going to absolutely love it. Uh, so tonight we're going to start with why. I think it's really important to dive into, you know, whenever we're adopting a new method in our practice, we always want to have a clear vision of what we're trying to accomplish. I like to discuss O and patients. So these are patients that immediately will stand out to you as patients you should formulate for. We're going to talk about the easy way to formulate. Again, I'm going to give you a mental framework for formulating. Let's talk about delightful prescribing. You're going to amaze your patients and you can also build your brand, which I personally am really passionate about. I love it when our practitioners have their own brand going on, their white labeling. I just think it's really special. It really sets you apart just a great way to level up your practice really, really easily. So, hey, I'm Dr. Lydia. I've been a naturopath for 13 years. I primarily support women of color who are struggling with hormonal issues. Um, although I will say I just had a new use case for GLP-1 agonists. I also have a section of my practice dedicated to supporting people living with HIV. And some of them have very resistant weight loss, dyslipidemia, and just the way the fat is distributed on their body. If you've ever treated HIV patients, you'll know what I mean. And uh, I had my first patient go on Ozempic and she's losing weight and feeling quite good. So yeah, a new, a new use case. Perhaps we'll see that in the future for that particular patient population. Okay, so let's start with why. Why are we doing this? Um, so we all have this in common and we have a range of practitioners. We have naturopaths, medical doctors, we've got chiropractors, physician assistants. So that's something I really love about working with Vitamin Lab is that I do get to work with a range of practitioners. I, I should say I'm an account manager. So some of you may have met me before, maybe managing your accounts. Hey, um, and if not yet, maybe in the future, but yes, so we've got a, a big range and we're all working towards optimizing uh, our patient's experience. So if we're prescribing these drugs, which can be a big game changer for people, personally, one of my best friends who was told she could never get pregnant because of diabetes complications and PCOS, well, she's 40 years old and she's about to have her first baby. And it's thanks to Ozempic, she was able to lose the weight, start ovulating. So yeah, so some of these drugs are really game changers for people, but I will say there are side effects, particularly with the high, high dose ones like Wagovi, for example, which is a little bit higher dose than Ozempic. You will see about 30% of people will have some sort of GI, like significant GI thing, which could be anything from GERD to constipation, diarrhea. You know, you, you probably have seen it yourself. Uh, so with this particular case, we're looking at managing side effects, we're looking at optimizing nutrient status, because I will express that I, I suspect quite a few of these patients with decreasing their overall caloric intake are also decreasing their nutrient status. Uh, we're going to be treating the individual, which is something that's really great about the personalization piece is because you can really just treat the person in front of you and the patient feels very, very special when you know, you're really tuned into what they need and you're um, like prescribing something that is special to them. I will say that's an excellent patient experience. <clears throat> and we're also guiding patients to find the right products. 
because let's talk about sort of the supplement industry. I'm going to back up for a second uh, because if we have a Houston, we have a problem basically. So a lot of our patients, so I created this little chart. So this is the degree of personalization on this access. And then we also have patient demand, meaning where are patients shopping? Many of our patients are going to be at grocery stores and online retailers like Amazon. So that is not a very personalized experience. It's very easy to get lost in the weeds. Uh, it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole of Amazon reviews, or maybe you're standing in the Whole Foods aisle, especially in the U.S. So I'm in Canada. But in the U.S., last time I was in Target, the supplement aisle was huge. There were so many bottles on the shelf. So I don't know how the average person navigates that. Like even as a naturopath, I was pretty much overwhelmed. So our patients are shopping here and, you know, we, they're really lost in the sauce at this point. Like who knows if they're going to pick up the right products. Like that's a hope and a prayer for us, right? The chain vitamin health food stores, which I personally have a special place in my heart for, because yeah, I, I, I work very much alongside a health food store. There's a lot of SKUs, a lot of products. I've seen a lot of products in my life, but the sales just aren't here. They're not growing here. People don't want to drive to a specific store anymore. They want to pick up their fish oil at Costco. But there is great demand for personalization. People do have a sense that their body is unique. They want something particular for them. And this is where I want our practitioners to be. So shout out to you for working with Vitamin Lab because you are on the cutting edge and there is demand. Patients do want that personalized supplement and they will stick with something that is crafted for them, especially something that can evolve with them over time, which is also something very, very special about what Vitamin Lab can offer. Um, okay, so let's just talk about this shopping experience, right? So what's happening is that there's major retailers, and this would be like our online store where we would make a profit, which I do like our doctors to be able to make sales and have some profitability there. But at times, things are just out of stock. It's just what's happening so in this case i originally made this slide in june so let's fast forward to the summertime let's all go there together and it was uh, this particular digestive enzyme which could be easily something you prescribe for somebody having digestive distress on a glp1 agonist um we're seeing 46 days before that product is coming back in stock that's not going to work for our patients immediately they're going to be on amazon and in six hours they're going to get their product so <clears throat> What that really does is it doesn't create a very good patient experience. When you're prescribing something, you want it, you want this particular product for them, it's out of stock, they go on Amazon, they can have it within the same day. That doesn't work out very well. And now you've lost the sale and our patients are gonna be ending up on Amazon now every time we prescribe them something, which is not what we want. Uh, we also have this issue where you get pricing discrepancies, right? Where you're maybe charging a little bit more and they can find it cheaper somewhere else. And some of our patients don't, don't care, but some of our patients, they do want to get optimal pricing. And it just sort of, it's just kind of awkward when they find something a little bit cheaper than what you're prescribing. Like patients do know we make money on supplements, but I don't think they really want to know our exact profit margin. And we also can run into this issue with a customer's ranking things two stars. This was just one person and the patient now has doubt in their mind, like, why would Dr. Lydia prescribe something two stars to me? Like I'm a five star patient. Why would I be taking this product? And now we have more confusion. So when we're personalizing, when we have control over what we're prescribing to our patient, they can't go anywhere else. They're taking their customized product. We eliminate all of this, this issue, right? So this is why we're doing this. We're guiding our patient to exactly what we want them to take customized for them. Because we do know that medicine is a science, certainly, but it's also an art and how your patient feels interacting with you as soon as they walk through the door of the clinic, just how confident they feel, how personal they feel that experience is, you know, all of that goes together in terms of actually impacting patient outcomes. Like our patients feel better when they feel taken care of. And I will argue that a lot of people in our healthcare system do not feel well taken care of. And hence why we're in business, right? Why they come and see us. And I will say custom formulation is really the pinnacle of prescribing. When you're able to practice the art of medicine, your listening ability, your ability to ask the right questions, to probe, to gather information, to help the patient with what not, might not be their chief concern, but getting to the root of the problem, like that is just badass. Like you are a favorite. They'll, they're never gonna leave your practice. They're so happy to work with you. And then when we can integrate the, the research and the science and the interpretation of their lab reports and put all of that together and create this personalized product that's managing their side effects and symptoms, like they're just, they're satisfied. And you're satisfied too. I will say like 
I feel satisfied at the end of the day as a working person when I'm able to provide this level of service. Okay, so formulating really means you're in your own lane. And this is what I want for all of my practitioners. You know, what I love is we're each a little bit different with the way that we prescribe and the way that we formulate. And I just like the fact that we're in our own lane. We're not competing with Amazon on delivery times. Uh, we're creating loyalty because people recognize our brand. They see us as being a strong practitioner for them as a trusted source of information and products as well. And we get to make a profit. It's just very important to me that our practitioners have sustainable income, have a recurrent source of income because it is exhausting when you're just constantly trading your time for finances. Like it's nice to have this uh, extra revenue source. So personally, I just, I like that for our practitioners. I, I want that for you. And it's because you have something truly unique to offer because again, each one of you are going to formulate something a little bit different and that's really cool. Um, okay, so let's talk about our O and patients because this is when you will quickly recognize when you should formulate. And that's when somebody comes in with one chief concern, and then usually at the end of the visit, of course, when the hour's up or the half an hour is up, they say something like, oh, and I've been having terrible anxiety, or oh, and I'm bloated every single time I eat X, Y, Z, or oh, and I wake up at 4 a.m. with these brutal, brutal hot flashes. And maybe they came to us for blood sugar issues, for weight loss, for their hair is dry, they get too many hangnails, who knows why they've come to us, but they're saying, oh, and I also have these other things going on. So at that point, you can either prescribe multiple bottles of products, which happens, that's fine. Or you can say, you know what, this is an opportunity to formulate. I could address their chief concern, but oh, and she's also having anxiety. Okay, well, let me like add in some phenine or some passion flower or do something that will address that concern. And patients feel amazing when they can have, you know, because you're really dealing with the totality of that person. Okay, so let's talk about our GLP-1 agonists. Uh, I feel like these are these are the main ones, but again, I'm not totally tapped into the US system and I feel like you guys might have extra drugs that I don't not familiar with. So we have our Manjaro, which is a GLP-1 agonist, but also has GIP, if I'm not mistaken, glucose-dependent insulogenic polypeptide. Ooh. Okay, so that one's got two drugs in it. We have Ozempic. Um, and we have Wagovi, which is the higher dose version of Ozempic. So again, Wagovi is the one that most that, that has the most side effects, I would say, uh, from a GI perspective, or really, really from all perspectives, because it is higher dose. And we have Saxenda, which is liraglutide. So not these are semaglutide. This is liraglutide, and this is trizepatide. Um, okay, so what are the effects that we're really mitigating for? So obviously, we're, we're we're having better insulin sensitivity, which is you know the whole point of using. Uh, these drugs. Uh, what I find interesting is the hypo hypothalamic impact of these drugs. So increasing satiety. So people are fuller, easier, more easily. And they also like, I, I'm sure you've had patients like this where they just don't think about food anymore. Like they used to be kind of food obsessed, perhaps, or just regularly into food as many of us are, myself included. Um, and, you know, they go long stretches of time without eating. They forget to eat things they used to love to eat. They're like, mm, you know, I could take it or leave it now. So I find the, uh, the uh, mental aspect quite interesting. And we know Ozempic and Wagovi, Saxend, I think, to a lesser extent, but these two in particular really cross that blood-brain barrier, so they do have those hypothalamic effects. And but this is really where we run into the probably the majority of the side effects is the decreased gastric emptying and the decreased peristalsis. So people are feeling nauseous, they're feeling full, they're getting GERD, they're burping, they're belching, they're having diarrhea, they're having constipation. You know, it's a lovely mix of <laughs> GI, GI distress and issues. And just because, and they're eating less. So, you know, we can postulate that there may be micronutrient deficiencies happening, particularly if they're eating like sort of standard North American food that's somewhat devoid of nutrients. So, you know, we'll have some patients that eat super healthy and then we'll have others that, um, you know, or especially if you're nauseous, right? You might just want, well, like I definitely had a patient who was surviving on toast for dinner because she was feeling nauseous all the time and that's not going to be a nutrient rich meal, so shall we say.
Um, okay, so I always like to do a case study. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna read through this. Don't feel like you need to read the slide. So uh, we've got Tracy, she's 52 and she's one of those patients who's tried everything. And I, I know we all have these patients. They've counted calories, done the protein shakes, the Weight Watchers, the Jenny Craig, they've ordered meals, they've had a trainer. This They've, they've had eating disorders. They've just stopped eating or maybe they've taken laxatives or they've done everything. And now they're on these medications and the weight is coming off and they're like, hallelujah. Thank the Lord, it's finally happening for me after all of these years, and they're excited about it. Um, you know, in this case, uh, she was she's part East Indian, so she has a propensity towards type 2 diabetes. And I will say, you know, in this case, she's a nurse and she feels like she should have known better. You know, it was really upsetting to her to be diagnosed. And I think we do have to remember that too. You know, when you receive that diabetes diagnosis, like it, it's a low point, like people they're sad and they're not feeling great. And sometimes they feel like they should have known better. And sometimes they do know better, but they just didn't know what to do. And now these medications have come into their life, their blood sugar's under control, they're losing some weight. And uh, I will say, you know, I have a lot of nurse patients, nurses, teachers, and like, these are smart people that are, they're not eating fast food three times a day. Like they know all the salads and smoothies. And, you know, a lot of my overweight patients, they actually eat fairly well because they they are sort of trained to be conscious of their food right but she comes in and she says you know I, I'm, I'm my blood sugar is under control but my gut is a mess and this is what happens they feel like they have to choose between like nausea and having diarrhea and like being fat like what a choice right so if we can help people to not have the gi side effects and continue that the, help them continue on their weight loss journey well that's awesome and she also says, look at my hair. So there's some emerging research and it's about, it looks like it's about 3% of people that are on Mogovi, they experience hair loss. But for an individual that's sitting across from you experiencing hair loss, it's stressful. Like there's a few conditions that will make a patient cry, I find, and like hair loss is one of those. If I have a woman who's losing her hair and she feels like it's just falling out and, happen and happening without her being able to do much about it, she's gonna cry. Like it's almost guaranteed. It's very, very upsetting. So she's noticing that she has this thinning of her hair. She's not too sure what she needs. She's a special shampoo now. So let's get her, let's get her on track. Let's help her with her hair. Let's help her not have to wake up and barf in the morning. Like let's get her feeling better. Let's help Tracy. So this is kind of what I would sort of do. Everybody's going to have their own thing, but I, I definitely think screening for micronutrient deficiencies with one of our partners. So Vitamin Lab does have a couple of lab companies that we you can formulate very, very easily with. You run a micronutrient panel and it will populate into the portal um, what their deficiencies are. If you have questions about that, I will have my email at the end. You can reach out to me and I'll get you get you settled with that. Some of us will already be running micronutrient uh, tests, but this is quite helpful when people have made radical changes in their diet to track and see, okay, are you getting enough selenium? Do you have enough um, of a certain amino acid in your diet? So we can do that. We certainly want to keep a, a diet diary. You know, like what did you eat for dinner two Thursdays ago? You probably cannot remember for the life of you. So let's get a diet diary going. This is what I would do. And I would also check body composition. We want people to be losing fat, not muscle, particularly for a healthy aging perspective. We know that muscle mass is extremely important for a patient population and their overall metabolism. Should they ever choose to come off the drug, we certainly want them to have appropriate muscle mass to support metabolism. Okay, yeah, let's just talk about this because there's some talk about berberine being nature's ozempic, um, but it doesn't have the same mechanism of action. So we know that, yeah, you know, the GLP-1 agonist, that's a very specific mechanism of action. Um, but berberine, if you're going to use it or if you have used it, berberine helps to increase AMPK, which in turn increases loop 4 transport, transport um, transporters. No, right word there. Um, so that brings glucose into the cell, basically. So it helps with glucose sensitivity, um, helps with lipid oxidation and with protein synthesis. So overall benefit to metabolism, helping with this glute 4 transport of getting glucose into the cell, but it doesn't work on GLP-1, so it's not nature's ozempic. They're not the same thing. Okay, so with Tracy, we're going to do some micronutrient testing. Let's do a digestive aid, and let's help her with her hair too. So we're going to go into the portal. Um, okay. So I'm in my vitamin lab portal. Let's, uh, sorry, let me get logged in here. Okay, so this is where you'll start. Uh, this is, we when we have new resources, podcasts coming out, this will be in this little uh, like 
cream colored space here. Uh, but we're going to start a new formula for Tracy. So we're going to add her. Okay, so we're going to edit the formula. I'm assuming many of you have seen the portal, but just as a general review, you're going to select your supply link. 90 days being standard, and you'll decide if you'd like a refill. Maybe we do one refill for Tracy. Uh, veggie capsules, or you can also choose a powder, and we do have flavored powders as well. Uh, but in this case, you know, for taste profile, because I'm going to be adding in some amino acids, which heads up, if you're going to be doing amino acids, no powders. <laughs> they do not taste good. They're very, very bitter. So just do the veggie capsules, preferably. Okay, so um, let's go in here now. When you do micronutrient testing, it will populate a formula into your portal. So that is your starting point. In this case, I don't have a test readily available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of our multivitamins. So we have 150 plus here. So please note that like we have spent time building out protocols. So you don't ever have to feel like you're sitting in front of the portal with 250 ingredients and you don't know where the heck to start. I personally found that overwhelming when I first started. So our research team, our nutrition team has done a lot of work in terms of building out protocols. So we have one here, 50 plus. So let's just say these are the micronutrients that we're going to add for her. Um, we know that she needs some GI support. So we can go in and we can also search by condition. So again, you don't need to sit there in front of 250 different ingredients and try to figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, just go in, search by condition. We have some things for gut health, um, particularly for um the glp1 contingent i really think that our enzymes are quite important to help with gastric emptying let's help the food uh be processed and you know we could certainly add in if she's feeling maybe a little bit nauseous we could do some ginger we have ginger root so what you can also use are the standard doses that we've had so we've spent quite a lot of time doing research where you'll see um, we have sort of the minimum dose. You don't need to pay attention to that, but like the maximum dose. So anything above 2200 milligrams is you're pulling out the big guns for this person. If you're underneath 2200 milligrams, that's basically a reasonable dose. We have a standard dose, which would be what's most common in the research. If you ever need additional information about a herb, we do link out to a nice little info page over here too, which maybe I'll just show you that quickly. Um, so yeah, natural medicines, professional database, we do have info here. So if ever you're concerned about safety profiles or kind of mixing with different drugs, this, this is a 12 pager, so I won't go through it, but there's quite a bit of research here. Um, but we can just add in a little bit of ginger for her. So right, right then and there, we have a unique product, but if she's losing hair, there's a, there's a few amino acids that are quite good for hair loss, uh, cysteine being one of them um l-cysteine so we can add in we can just do the standard dose of that uh, and we can certainly add in uh, probably cysteine and methionine are the two amino acids that are the most effective for um hair for keratin production uh so we can we can just start with that so immediately you can see that if she has a micronutrient panel a report and you've inputted this even if you just use a multivitamin you know, this is unique. Our multivitamin is pretty cool. And certainly if it's a micronutrient panel, that's really specific to the patient. We've added some things for digestion. We've added some things for hair. Certainly we could, you know, I could spend more time and get really crazy with this, but like, even this is a unique product. Like she's not going to be able to find this anywhere else on the market. And, you know, you're addressing all of her concerns in one thing. Like that's, you know, like who, who wouldn't want this? Like, I love my personalized product, calculate the price. And then we decide really, which is up to you. If you want to do a wholesale cost, you purchase the product, sell it to the patient, or you want to do month by month up to you. Number of capsules is five, you know, she takes three in the morning, two at night, but you saved her from buying a multivitamin, particularly if you're doing micronutrient testing. So this would really be tailored to her, a digestive support product and a hair support product, which by the way, hair support stuff is very, very expensive. I think Nutrafol is like upwards of 70 to $90, somewhere in that range. So right here, you have something really unique for Tracy that took me all of five minutes to make. It's And with the micronutrient panel, it's literally one click. It shows up in your portal. It couldn't be easier. And then you add on a couple extra ingredients that really get to the root cause and you know it's just it's awesome um okay i'm gonna go back into present mode 
Okay, so easy ways to formulate. Um, I'll go through the mental framework that you can use um, that would relate back to what I just did here. So really what when I first started formulating and customizing things, I thought back to Chinese medicine. I don't know if you've ever been to a Chinese herbalist, but they are really the masters at, um, oh, am I showing the right tab? Okay, sorry, I wasn't showing the right tab there for a second. So let's talk about easy ways to formulate. Um, ever been to a Chinese herbalist? So they're the masters at um, combining ingredients, hot, cold, yin, yang, you know, is it damp, is it drying? Like, so I really appreciate that mental framework. It's 5,000 years old, like, and, and you know, certainly I'm not Chinese, I'm no expert in this, but uh, I love my Chinese herbalist, he's amazing. Um, so they have the concept of emperor, minister, assistant, and guide. So in this case with the GLP-1 agonist, the, the emperor, like really the pinnacle there is nutrient support. Even if we just offer nutrient support, that patient is still much better off than they were before. If their a caloric intake is down, their food intake is down, you know, they're going to be deficient in something more than likely, right? Um, and then we can offer supportive ingredients. So this is where the O and comes in. Um, so how can we help, in this case, this patient digest optimally? How can we help her hair? And then we can move into the assistant, which is anticipatory support. So we have some patients that are just, they have the adrenal fatigue, they have the, um, they, they have poor mitochondrial function. They're just very tired. They tend to be run down. Maybe they have kind of, you know, sometimes they have a look to them where they're just sort of like, you can tell their vitality just isn't there. So we can anticipate those types of problems. We can give them NMN, we can give them coenzyme Q10. We can certainly support their thyroid. There's some indication too, that there could be some mental health um, impacts of taking uh, the GLP-1 agonist, some increase in anxiety and depression. And I think there's even some research on suicidal ideation. So I think it's a pretty good idea for us to be checking in with how our patients are feeling from a mental health standpoint. So we can help them with all of this. So really building out a, a, a a product, excuse me, that has the nutrient support that ha that's addressing their O and conditions, the other things that they have on top, and then anticipating things like even this alone is amazing. And then certainly if there's weak uh, circulation or weak, you know, enzymatic function, we can add aid in the delivery of nutrients. So we can use that. Um, okay, so we address Tracy. I think I kind of skipped ahead. Uh, yeah, let's formulate for Tracy. I've already formulated for her. So yes, we've done that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is what if I mess this up? <laughs> when people are first starting to formulate and I, you know, we have these conversations or with doctors, they're like, what if I mix the wrong things together? What if this just, if this doesn't work out? Like I, I'm a little nervous about this. And there's also the question of how do I choose between the different forms of vitamins and minerals? Not all of us have this knowledge off the top of our, of our head and fair enough, <laughs> you know, there's quite a lot, quite a lot here. Um, I want to express that Vitamin Lab, we really have your back. We want you to look like a rock star in front of your patients. And we're able to do this because we have a whole team. You have a whole team working behind you. So uh, we have inputs from customers and from physicians, doctors, practitioners of various types. So we learn a lot about products, what works and what doesn't work. So that's very helpful. Um, we have a team that's looking at product palatability. So for example, if you put through a powdered formula and it has a lot of amino acids that taste bitter and not very nice, uh, we'll reach out to you and we'll say, this product tastes bitter and not very nice. Are you sure you want to formulate like this? So uh, we've got your back with that. And product functionality, you know, I, I look at all the products that are being prescribed. So if ever uh, doctors want help uh, formulating, we're here to help. And so we do have a formulary team. We have an amazing lab team that puts together uh, all of your customized products. And so we have this whole feedback loop. We're constantly talking. Our Slack channels are exploding all the time. So yeah, if you ever have a formula or if you're new to this and you're just not too sure, just reach out. There is help for you. We are here to make you look good and have you be confident, which is why we're doing this webinar. Um, okay, so let's just go over minerals and understanding chelates. Uh, because I think sometimes people aren't sure like calcium citrate or calcium glycinate. Like, um, so bisglycinates are a very common form of mineral and really they work well uh, from an absorption standpoint because st their pH is stable. So when they reach um, even the stomach acid, they 
don't dissociate immediately, where something like calcium citrate will dissociate very fairly quickly. Um, there's a small particle size and they are absorbed through active transport. So it's really easy to get um, the product into out of the intestinal lumen and into circulation uh, using a bisglycinate. So we have a number of them. So just know that that's, that would be why you're selecting it because of the stability. Um, but again, if you have something like magnesium citrate, that will dissociate more quickly in the gut and that, that's where you might get the laxative effect or the stool softening effect from like a magnesium citrate, which you might want it for that purpose, right? And then you choose the magnesium citrate or if it's for like muscular health or cardiovascular health, maybe go with the glycinate because that one um, is very easily absorbed. Glycine also has a nice relaxing nature on the nervous system too. So glycine is being our smallest amino acid. Um, and okay, so with vitamins, you're really looking at the ligand, like what is that vitamin attached to? Generally speaking, the, um, like if it's just straight up riboflavin, something like that, or thiamine HCL, that will be sort of the really basic form of the vitamin. Um, uh, the other ones that are say like this riboflavin 5-phosphate, that's a more active form of the vit vitamin, benthothiamine, um, also being, this one's like a fat soluble one. So it, uh, it, well, it's amphoteric, it's fat and water soluble. So this one's really well absorbed. So I guess it takes a little bit of memorization. I have a nutrient chart. Um, but generally speaking, uh, just the straight up vitamin, that's will be the less expensive form. If you're looking to save on cost, it would be a little bit less expensive. Um, but if people don't have nutrient, <coughs> excuse me, nutrient absorption problems, using the straight up form of the vitamin is fine and the body will just uh, convert it to the active form. But we do have the active forms available. And then we do have like vitamin B12 and the hydroxycobalamin form and the methylcobalamin form. Some people really like methylated, um, methylated vitamin B12. And then I have other practitioners who are like, if you have methylation defects, you should never use methylated B12. So, you know, different practitioners do different things. And I really like that for us. It's very interesting. Um, okay, so this is also the elephant in the room because when you look at a nutrient, okay, so let's take vitamin B2 in this case, the RDA is set usually quite low dose. So in this case, it'd be 1.1 milligram per day. And then we go over and we look at something like uh, the complex and the riboflavin here is at 15 milligrams, which is a thousand percent more than what's at the RDA. So people get unsure about this. Like, should I really be prescribing 33,000% of the RDA being the recommended daily allowance what the FDA would have said? Um, so why are we doing this? Like, why is this so much higher than what the RDA is? Um, because we don't have this issue with pharmaceuticals, right? Like you're not going to take 176 pills of Tylenol, right? <laughs> like way beyond the recommended dose. That just doesn't happen. So why, what, what is going on there? What is the deal? Um, so let's just take you back to nutrition school. <laughs> sorry, sorry if this is a little traumatic, but um, the RDA is set to prevent deficiency in 98% of the population, maybe 98.5, I think it's 98.5. Um, so really what you're looking at is managing deficiency, which is why riboflavin is set at 1.1 milligrams, right? But your patient will be somewhere from year, there's going to be patients that literally need boop, the tiniest little bit of riboflavin and they're good for three years. You know, like there, there are those people. Um, but they're going to be somewhere along this continuum, like the upper limit. This is this is no observed adverse effect in the lowest. Of, this, these are adverse effects over here. So we're not getting into this zone. But your patient is going to be somewhere from here to here. And we have doctors that prescribe very high dose and we have doctors that prescribe just over the RDA. And you know what? They both get results. They both do well with patients. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that there's one way to do this. There isn't. Different doctors do different things. Uh, I will say that with the micronutrient panels, it helps with a guide because it will tell you where your patient is sitting at, for, not from a serum perspective, blood perspective, but more from a functional nutrient uh, perspective. I'm sorry. Sorry, my TV just randomly turned on there. Um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so your patient will be somewhere along this continuum. Um, use our reference guides. So we will give you the highest sort of dose that's been found in the research. And if you're exceeding that, you know, you're you're doing pretty high dose, which again, some doctors do, and that's totally fine. Um, but, you know, we give you kind of the recommended reasonable doses. And if you're kind of in here, that's kind of where the research is is really sitting. Um, okay, what to avoid? 
Um, okay, so kitchen sink products. I will say those are the ones that are the most difficult for people to, particularly uh, if people have decreased gastric emptying, we don't want to make them ill by giving them products that just have everything in them. And I know the inclination sometimes can be to prescribe, you know, absolutely everything you think might be good for this patient. Do the micronutrient report. Even if you don't do the micronutrient report, like try to give some targeted nutrients. Try to just deal with what their chief concerns are. If they need some digestive support, fine. If they need a little bit of sleep support, fine. But you don't have to solve the world's problems with one product because the body has a tremendous ability to heal itself given the right substrates. So if you feel like you want to give the patient absolutely everything, like reach out to me or your account manager, Carolina, because we can help you formulate, help you kind of whittle it down, um, help you analyze the research as well in terms of what would be most effective for this patient. Um, because I do find that when products just have like, 10 capsules a day and stuff like, like they just it's just too much for a patient to digest particularly if there's a uh, slower gastric emptying uh, with the glp1 agonists so again we've got your back okay we have a product team we have a lab team we're here to help you you don't have to do this on your own um delightful prescribing how to amaze your patients and build your brand and again i really really love it when our patient when our practitioners private label i really love it when you have your own protocols and you do your own thing so uh, we can support GLP-1 agonists. Like if, if this is a big aspect of your practice, you can pretty much anticipate that you're going to have a need for some, if not all of these products. And you can purchase them with us. You can do protocols in your portal. So when you're going in to prescribe, like you saw how I did the multivitamin protocol. Well, you can make your own protocols and I can help you with that too, where you just develop. So each time you go in there, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just select your protocols and what you can do is build protocols on each other so if you want digestive help with mitochondrial support you take your two protocols you put them together well you have a brand new customized product and it took you all of 30 seconds to make that so it's really worth having your protocols set in your portal so you don't start from scratch and again if you find that you know what i'm prescribing the same thing over and over again i'd like to bring the cost down a little bit do a bulk order. You could order 50 bottles of something like you can. We have low minimums. A lot of supplement companies will not talk to you unless you're ordering a thousand bottles of something. And, you know, for a practice like that can be a lot of finances to invest in something. So 50 bottles with us. You can just start small and just see how things go. Um, but you can, you know, really strategize. And this is what your account manager is here to help you do is to like really get a lay of the land. Like, OK, what do I need to treat my patients that are on this medication? How can I have a really robust program built out for them so that I can anticipate products? Because you might have somebody who already has compromised thyroid and adrenal function. Like, you know, they already have this problem. So let's just get them going on the product uh, right away. So you can build out, you can have your digestive product, you can have your adrenal product, you can have your your hair product and your mitochondrial support. And these will all complement together. You can mix and match them. And again, you don't have to start from scratch. And then if you're like, you know what? My hair product is just chef's kiss. I love it. I'm using it all the time. We'll order 50 bottles of it, you know, bring the price down and you know, you're going to sell it anyways. So there you go. Um, and this is what I love. So I went on Amazon and I searched nausea supplement and look what comes up right like this is okay gravel ginger wonderful maybe that helps some people that's fantastic no problem there but it's not it's nothing like what we made for tracy it doesn't have the nutrients for the hair it's not correcting her micronutrient deficiencies so you know and this is what our patients are doing is they are googling this stuff they are on amazon and they are you know hoping for the best looking at reviews trying to figure out pricing what why is this one seven dollars and this one's nineteen dollars like which one does dr lydia want me to take like you know who the heck knows well i want you to take your personalized supplement that i prescribed for you and they will take it because it has their name on it and they understand and you're saving them time and stress from being on amazon trying to search for things so launching with vitamin lab you're going to onboard you're going to meet your account managers and you're going to aim for just one a week even if you just formulate for one person a week that's the tipping point. Once you're doing like one a week and you're getting into that mindset of, oh, and, and you know, you're thinking about, okay, I have my, G my GLP-1 agonist patients. You know, I know that Susan's not really tolerating this well. Like I'm going to create something to really complement what she has going on. And 
these three steps are the tipping point. Like you've met with your managers, you're in the vitamin lab world, you know, you're, you, you have a little bit of a relationship with us. You know, you can pick up the phone and call Lydia when, you know, what do you think about this? Or I just read research on that. Like, you know, that, that really, that's what we find practitioners really are in they, their heads in the game. They're formulating and they're making a profit off of their vitamin lab products. And this, this package here says vitamin lab, but as many of you know, watching this, you can have your, your logo and label here, which is what I love. Um, so again, we've got your back, reach out for help anytime you want to, we are always here.